Greetings of peace and joy, St. John's United Methodist Church. Church in the heart of Watts with Watts at heart. Welcome to the worship celebration of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to everyone who is watching um, for the first or second time, members and non-members. I am so honored and blessed to be here. I am Reverend Christy. I am a deacon associated here with St. John's United Methodist Church. Many of you have probably heard of Strengthening the Black Village SBV, which is a ministry I am pioneering. I'm soon to be nonprofit, and right now we're housed at St. John's, hoping to partner with St. John's amongst many um, in our work with foster families. We're starting with um, offering fathering mentor because we believe that, especially in the black community, we need to strengthen and empower our men. And we're starting with parenting classes so that people who have had their children removed and they wish to have them replaced, a lot of times they're required to take these courses. So I received certification and am planning with my team to offer those as well as train um, staff and congregants um, in the in the district and in the conference and elsewhere inside and outside of the church to conduct those classes as well so that families can be reunited and also as a preventative measure so parents don't have their children removed from their homes and the the peace part of that and the social justice part of that actually goes so well with this series which is doers of the word doers of the word and with today's sermon, which is um, uh, reaping God's wisdom harvest, reaping God's wisdom harvest, which is how do we get the wisdom of God that we need in order to do ministry. And part of that is, of course, counterintuitive or countercultural wisdom. What the wor world says is wisdom isn't always wisdom. Take young Ian. So he, young Ian dies and he goes to the gates of heaven. And you know, Peter's at the gates, right? Waiting to let people in or not. But the gates are closed and Peter says the gates are closed because we're really full. So we have an interest, entrance exam that we want you all to take. And the little boy says, oh no, I'm no good at tests at all. So I hope this one is easy. And Peter says, no worries. It's only three questions. You got this. Um, I'll give you three questions and you can come back tomorrow with the answers. So here you go. Number one, what two days of the week start with T's? Second, how many seconds are there in a year? And third, what is the first name of God? So young Ethan goes away to think about it and he comes back the next day and he says, all right, Peter, Apostle Peter, I got it. All right, so tell me, what two days of the week start with T? That one was pretty easy, today and tomorrow. <laughs> Peter's like, that's not really what I was expecting, but I guess it it is a good answer um, and I didn't really, maybe I wasn't direct enough, but it's okay. So question number two, how many seconds are there in a year? Well, this one took some, a lot of thinking, but I got it. 12, 12, We're, 12 seconds in an entire year, how? how? January 2nd, February 2nd, March, okay, I, I understand, I got your drift. Um, that's really not what I was expecting either, but I'll take it. All right, my third question, what is God's first name? That one was the easiest of all, Andy. Andy? Why Andy? The other two sort of make sense, but I can't imagine how you're gonna explain this one. It's, it's a song that I used to sing in Sunday school. Andy walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I guess that's good. You can go in. Andy's wisdom is 
not the wisdom of the world, right? He is right on every count, but something about his answers hits the hits us wrong because but he got into the gates of heaven on a counterintuitive kind of sweet and innocent kind of unworldliness right and so in a way james is telling us though that this is the kind of wisdom we need and so i mean it doesn't fit exactly with today's story but it's an it's a cute illustration of how we need to be more childlike um, in order to enter the gates of heaven. Let's see if our next illustration fits better. And the reason I picked this next one is because it speaks so deeply to why I've decided or why I've been called to, because I really believe that God called me to this more than me deciding to take this on. Um, it connects with SBV and today's scripture. So it's a Chinese proverb and this mother lost her child. No, I don't think it was Ethan, but she lost her child. And so she goes to a holy man and she says, can you bring my son back? Um, he's passed and, and I, the sorrow is too great and I need my son back. And he says, if you can go to a house, um, that has not known sorrow and bring me back a mustard seed of magic mustard seed then i can bring your son back and so she goes and she goes to a mansion because she figures okay they're rich and they're powerful and surely they don't have sorrows and definitely not you know serious so she goes and she says i'm looking for a house that they ha where they have no sorrows and she's and they say oh my goodness well you're in the wrong place because we've known lots and they tell her their stories in this mansion and she stays with them and says well maybe i can help them deal with their sorrow and from there she goes to the orphanages and to the streets where the children um, are, are poor and you know there's way more sorrow in the world and she gives herself to this struggle instead of fixating on her own pain, her own tremendous pain and loss. She gives everything she has to healing these children and these families and these broken people and broken places. And that's what I, that redemptive kind of pain that no one can force on you, you, you and God have to decide that that's the use for your pain. But in this case, that was her use, and that's been my my use too. So when I saw that story, I was like, exactly. Um, I, you know, I grew up in foster care, and I had church families who would come wherever I was and pick me up and drive me to church, to take me to service activities, and to volunteer to give out Thanksgiving dinner, and sing in the choir, and different things like that, right? And so... It's always been my vision to help the church do a lot of that same work. Um, works of justice and service, which James tells us, right? James tells us and Jesus tells us that that's, that is, those are the works, right? Je um, Jeremiah tells us those are the works that God wants from us. Joshua tells us so many people in the Bible, the Bible story is full of people that, did the work of God, right? And works of justice and works of mercy. And they saw the penalty when they didn't. And so today we are saved by grace and by faith. And so sometimes there's a false dualism between works and faith. But James is reminding us that they go hand in hand. What we do for Christ, the way we are doers of the word, is by having faith first in the word and by having faith that Christ did all the miracles, that he healed all the people, that he ate with all the sinners and tax collectors, and that that was the model he left for us. And so that is why we do the works, not to be saved, but because we are grateful that we are saved. And we want to share that with other people, just like the lady in our story wanted to say, share that with the children in China 
and the way I want to share it with our families. Now, when we are teaching parenting classes and father mentoring classes and and mentoring foster youth um, and different things like that, we're not necessarily talking to God, right? We're not um, proselytizing, but what we are doing is being the very real presence of Christ in the world for them. Maybe the only presence of Christ they are able to recognize. And so, you know, we start by kind of following James's formula, right? First, he says, seek wisdom and understanding. So, you know, I've gone to college, of course, in seminary, and now I'm obtaining my doctoral degree. <laughs> and that's part of like seeking knowledge and wisdom, right? But it's almost worldly knowledge and wisdom if it's not tampered with the knowledge and wisdom that comes from prayerful reflection, from Bible study, from community with God, from drawing close to God. And so God, so we have to start with seeking wisdom and understanding for what God's will for our lives and our ministries in his name are. Then we're to seek peace and we're to seek purity. And through our ministries, through our family lives, through our work lives, how, what are some ways we can seek peace? Avoid selfish ambition, avoid uh, greed, slander, um, the wickedness of the tongue. The tongue can have powerful healing properties, but it can have amazing, devastating, awful, destructive properties. And how do we seek the wisdom in order to be more peaceful, um, to be more pure hearted, because that purity of heart too enables us to follow God's will, enables us not to get burnt out, enables us to keep going when we don't know where the, the lights are you know, gonna get cut off or that kind of thing, because we're doing the work of God and not of the world. And sometimes that doesn't pay dividends right away, at least not the way that we need them to, but we pray because God hears us when our prayers are in righteousness, when they are from the heart, when they are not so much selfish as as for our 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 betterment, I guess, for to allow us to live abundantly in Him, um, which we can't do so much if it's you know um, if we're struggling. But, you know, sometimes that struggle is real. Like sometimes those burdens don't get lifted. Sometimes God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And he doesn't take away that thorn in our side. But we keep doing what is right. We keep seeking peace and we keep seeking purity of heart. And lastly, we seek closeness with God, right? We run to Christ and we cling to Christ and because in that way, God promises to draw close to us. And we push Satan away because then he flees from us, right? And we have to remember to keep on pushing him away. Because remember when, when Jesus was in the desert, Satan kept coming back. Well, and then at the end, he's like, I'm going to stay away. But I'm going to wait patiently for him to let down his guard for the opportune time to come back. And that's our life too. And so the the drawing close to God the seeking God to, to, to be doers of the world, to reap his wisdom harvest and his peace and his love and his grace, we have to continually draw closer to God in our actions, in our thoughts, in our prayers, in every aspect of our lives and ministry. And so at the end of the day, we have to determine in which ways are we being doers? of the word which ways are we demonstrating our faith which in which ways are we like the proverb 31 woman who is holding open her arms for the poor and stretching out her hands to the needy i've told you a bit of my story in the story of some of my team what's your story it might be a good time to pray about to talk about to journal about to commune with others about that. 
And if you're interested in more about SBB and how we're seeking to be the presence of Christ in the world, you know where to find me. Like I said before, happy anniversary. Happy International Day of Prayer for Peace. And may the peace of God be with you as you continue your journey to draw close to God and be doers of the world, the word in faith and by God's grace and spirit alone. Amen.